Welcome back. I decided to do GLaDOS because none of you commented leaving suggestions or voting on the two choices that I provided last episode. Except the one guy, and he suggested something I already made. So, I can't do that one. I'll show it at the very end of the video, so stick around if you want to see my interpretation of Pikachu. He looks pretty snazzy, I'll tell you that much right now. But instead I decided to do GLaDOS, partially because I feel like not a lot of people watched the last episode for a couple reasons. One, it's because I said in that episode, like, nobody made pixel art for Courage, and that's because Courage is kind of obscure, especially because he's a TV character. You wouldn't think to look that up. But I feel like because GLaDOS is from a video game, and people that like video games tend to like pixel art, so there's probably more people that like both pixel art and GLaDOS, and they'd want to see, like, the two come together. So, I decided to do that over Chowder. Which will still be one of the choices if you guys actually do want to vote, which you won't, because I know how comments work. They don't. I made that joke before. If you were paying attention, you didn't notice it. But you'll notice that we're in a different program this episode. Instead of Paint.net, I'm using Aspirate. And I gotta say, I know you can, like, see things, but I was watching back the first episode with Courage, which, uh, if you haven't seen yet, you should. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I, I like it. When I was watching it back, you couldn't really see, like, what I was doing. Like, you couldn't see me, like, changing colors or, like, picking different tools. It just kind of happened. And this, you can kind of see me, like, moving my mouse over to the toolbar on the right there. And, like, I like that because it makes a little bit more sense, like, to the viewer. But just as a program in general, I don't like Aspirate as much. There's a couple things that I really like needed. I'm still going to use it. Maybe not for this, or I'm going to do it in sections. I don't know yet. But look at these selection things. I had to select like everything twice. Because I think I'm just an idiot. But whenever I tried to select something, I would have to do it with like the deselect thing. I would have to like un... Okay, it's weird. I'm not going to go into it. Because pro you probably don't care. But either way, I liked, I liked doing this. This was fun. It was a challenge. I liked it because Courage was a 2D image, and I made another 2D image. You know, I took a 2D flat image, which was Courage, with a lot of defined black outlines, so I knew where everything was going to go. And I think it turned out great. Go, like I said, go watch the other episode. That one was really accurate. I don't... This... My Gladys isn't very accurate to the reference I was using. And that's because, in the reference, GLaDOS is just, like, head is tilted a little bit to the side. And the way mine came out, she's just kind of, like, looking forward. But I like this because, like I said, flat image, and GLaDOS is a 3D object, alright? If you want to get into technicalities, I am just still using a 2D image, a flat image. I don't have a model of GLaDOS right in front of me, I'm sorry. But it's still a challenge because there aren't those dark black outlines and like defined features. A lot of it is like covered in shadows, so I have to guess. Like this middle section here. This is one of my favorite things I think I've ever made. And I'm not talking about GLaDOS in general, I'm talking about this little middle section. It's like when it's done, I just I loved all the shading I did. I got to use a bunch of different techniques, because like I said, Courage had a bunch of solid colors, GLaDOS has a bunch of shadows and all the light reflecting off of her got all this weird like transitions and gradients and I tried to do that and I, I liked how this middle section turned out this is like the best shading I've ever done ever and I'm proud of myself okay doing more of the midsection here. this took a lot longer than the last one this is about nine and a half hours of work all compressed in under like eight. No, not under eight. It's like eight forty. I think when I like compressed all the footage, like I sped it up, to make the raw footage itself is about eight forty-eight, like eight minutes forty-eight seconds, and that's from like nine hours and probably like nine and a half hours of work. Uh, so pro tip: Movie Maker doesn't like it when you put nine hours of raw footage into it all at once. Okay, I'm just gonna let you guys know that so that you don't do that. Unless you're crazy. I don't even think I mentioned. 
I think at the very beginning of the video, I don't think I mentioned it, but if you're like really paying attention, you could see like a little bit of flashes of like space core hidden pixel art, hidden space core pixel art. I did that a long time ago, and I at the beginning I tried to use like the same palette from that, and it, it didn't really work. Oh, the curves. This curves. It's bottom curves. I was really excited to get to this part. Like, when I was doing, like, the boring stuff, like, the midsection, but I thought it was boring when I was doing it. Then when it was done, I was like, wow, that's pretty. But these curves, they took me, like, at least an hour and a half, probably. <laughs> because, like, I tried to make them look clean and stuff, too. Because I don't... I, like... I pride myself. I think my curves can be pretty clean, right? And just... You can see how long this took me. It's like the other stuff I did in like a flash, did like a snap. Wait, can I snap into my mic? I wonder if that picked up. It probably didn't. But those curves, man. It just ugh. Now here's here's the one thing I liked about Asprite. You can see me use it for like half a second there. I didn't end up using it there, but when we get to like the big wires, Asprite has some pretty nifty like blending tools that help with shading. You'll see, because I, I had to do some, like, light reflecting on some of the wires. And this dithering right here that I was doing at the base, like, the bottom area, that works for down there, but there's no good way to use that for, like, streaks of light. And you'll see, it looks really good when I actually use the tool. So I'm thinking if I do use Aspirate again, I'm probably going to do it in a way where I do the base stuff in paint.net and then I'll switch over to Asprite for like shading and stuff. I don't know. It depends. I think this portion of it turned out good too. Like as far as like how it looks. The only thing I think like if you like compared this side by side to the reference image, I think it could have been a little bit bigger. I still think it doesn't even like affect anything. I still think it's like it's okay. But if you really like put mine side by side with, with the reference I was using, some of my scaling got like really off. And like I said, that's because I didn't have those dark outlines, so I just had to guess with like the spatial relations of a lot of these things. Oh, here we go to the wires. As, when I got to the wires, I like completely stopped looking at the reference image because I like I didn't care. I got like where some of the main ones needed to go, but Towards like the middle and like putting in some filler wires, I just I didn't care. Especially when it came to shading. Like at the towards the very end, because actually a part of this got cut off. I don't know where it went. I lost some of the footage. I don't know where it went. But some of the shading, like in that center area you just saw, like near where the white panels are. I kinda got lazy with them. Because I put like some shading on like the front ones, but because the ones the other ones like in the background are supposed to be dark, because like I said, shadows. I didn't really try as hard on those. Oh, here we go. See, look. You'll see it when it's really done. But I, like, for half, like, half a second. So it's me trying to do the light. It doesn't really work. And then, you, once you see it, you can see it in the preview down there. Look at that light. Look at that pretty light. Isn't that nice? That's towards the end. You missed a little bit. I think I lost, I accidentally deleted some of the footage. You didn't miss a whole lot. The only thing you really missed was I added, like, maybe one or two more wires but other than that that was that was it that was nine and a half hours well spent honestly I think it turned out pretty good especially just like look at the midsection isn't it great look how pretty it is it's great I love it and you should love it too and there you go the bottom left hand corner is Pikachu I made that look how snazzy he is are you jealous of that Pikachu I bet you are I bet you are anyway as far as voting and suggestions because people like like I wasn't like a huge like didn't blow up or anything but it did get quite a few likes so I'm like okay I'll do more so chowder's still gonna be another choice and to hook on to that TF2 crowd that we never pander to. If you guys actually vote, I'll do a TF2 character. Any TF2. But you have to actually vote, or else I'm gonna do Chown. So there you go. Leave suggestions down in the comments if you want. I actually fixed the outro, and it looks really snazzy now. Goodbye.